Okay. So um, for this session, we're going to be looking at Kero. Okay. 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 So. Uh, Okay, so let's start with uh, the, the challenges uh, of um, data science uh, as a general, the pipeline. So one of the things that are, um, let me just slide show this one. Okay. So one of uh, the challenges of uh, data science So one of the challenges of data science is just that the codes or the pipeline that we use is not clean. So it's not easy to understand and it's not easy to reproduce by others and it's not easy to um, collaborate on a project because uh, the, the codes are not uh, formal, like they don't have one structure. So as anyone or any uh, one joining the team would have a hard time understanding and keeping up with the team so uh, spaghetti code uh, is just to show that it's not maintained well and it's hard to collaborate so uh, most of the data science projects are uh, by like have this trait. So the next thing uh, is that uh, it lacks reproducibility. So what this means is since the codes are not modularized, uh, anyone who's looking to re redo our project may find it hard to do. And the last thing is deployment. So after, uh, so uh, if you remember from MLOps, uh, uh, we have talked about we have talked about the process of ML loops, and the last thing is uh, where it's a cycle, a cyclic process. But uh, why the last thing that we are going to do is de deploy it. So, if our uh, project or our data science pipeline is not modular and it's not clean, we may find it hard to deploy it. So that's where Kedro comes in. So. Um, so Kedro is uh, just a Python uh, framework for creating uh, creating a, a reproducible, maintainable, and mod modular uh, code. So um, it has some uh, kind of uh, it's, uh, it has some traits that align with orchestration, but you uh, make sure not to uh, confuse the two because orchestration and uh, this framework are two different things. Although there are, there are some points that uh, align with each other. So yeah, so it just helps uh, the data science engineers uh, to develop production ready uh, data pipelines. Yeah, so the benefits of Kedro are uh, it's easy to reproduce, it's easy to maintain, it's easy to uh, scale and collaborate, and it's easy to deploy. So since Kedro pipelines are, uh, when you are wor working on Kedro projects, the pipelines are production ready, so it's easier to de deploy them. So there are actually three points that we are going to look at uh, when looking at Kedro. So the first thing is uh, data catalogs. So it's where we store our data that's to be used in the pipeline. I think we have read from the documentation, there are um, around seven uh, layers of the data, starting from uh, the raw data and going all the way through uh, to the reporting. So all these data are called uh, data catalogs. And the next thing is the nodes. So the nodes are just a function for every step that you are going to do when working on your data science project. 
So I think for this project, you are only expected to do the data cleaning process, but it's nice to keep in mind that uh, it also includes the whole uh, data science pipeline. So, uh, so it takes inputs from the data uh, catalog and produces the outputs. So, uh, and the last thing is just a pipeline. So it just connects the nodes uh, into in orders uh, of the workflow of the data science project. So these three concepts are the key concepts when we are talking about Pedro. So in order to build our Pedro, so the first thing that we are going to do is just define the data catalog and which specifies the type of data and the location of the data, uh, each da data. And then we are going to create the nodes. We can use um, uh, notebooks to make things easier, uh, but in the end, we, we're going to need the functions for each step. So the functions uh, is going to include reprocessing or the data cleaning, feature enjoying, uh, model training, evaluation, and deployment. And then just the pipeline is just there to. Uh, have to just uh, create the flow, like just the order of the flow. So uh, just to recap uh, the uh, data layers. So I think you have already read, uh, read this, but just to uh, recap them. Uh, it, are there any questions, guys? Am I moving too fast or too slow? Okay, I will take that as a no. So the first layer is going to be the row layer. So in the row layer, you're gonna store the raw data that you have fetched or you have, uh, received from the data team. So uh, this uh, layer is important because uh, whenever anyone wants to uh, uh, your work, they're gonna need to start uh, the uh, raw data, so you, you're going to keep this one. So uh, it can take many types of uh, data sets, <coughs> and it can be connected with databases, CSVs, and APIs, and so on. So the intermediate layer is actually uh, an optional layer, so it's just a, tempor a temporary storage lo location where you just make a minor transformation. So it's not a major transformation, but a minor transformation like uh, like changing the schema or just doing some minor edits, right? So then you have the primary layer. So the primary layer uh, is just stores uh, the cleaned data and uh, that's already transformed and it's ready for feature engineering. So this is the clean data, the primary data. And then you have the feature layer. So here is where you do your uh, feature engineering on your primary data, like scaling, encoding, and uh, dimensional reduction. I think we have seen these techniques on, I think, week two. So here is where you store this uh, type of data. And then, uh, since the pre-processing and the feature uh, enjoying has been done. So, uh, no, the feature, like the scaling and everything is done. The next thing is going to be preparing the, your data for modeling. So just preparing your data for training, right? So in order to do that, you're going to take the featured uh, selection and just do some optimization on the, on the data in order to have the model input layer. So after you have the model input layer, you're going to have the model output layer. So this uh, layer is just the final output of your uh, like a uh, machine lear learning project or uh, like de data science project. So after you have cleaned everything and you have trained the data and you have uh, like uh, predicted if if you are working on prediction so where after you have predicted you're going to have a data right you have, you're going to have the prediction or the results 
that's generated by the inputs in the models. Like the models could, could be in uh, like classification, regression, and so many things, right? So, uh, so this layer is just the output of uh, the ML model and the input was uh, what you had earlier so this is the output and then uh, at the last layer you have the reporting layer so the reporting layer is actually uh, an optional layer just like the intermediate layer but if you want to report like uh, by using visualizations uh, matrices and things like that you can use it but if you don't want to report it or just visualize it you can just uh stop at the model output layer so if if you you just want to have your data so i think that's it for the introduction part so do you have any questions guys questions Yes, Daniel. Uh, for the last time, uh, we have been asked to create uh, four tables. So the will is to make uh, four loops in this pipeline. Excuse me? I, I think your voice is a bit far. Uh, we have been asked for, uh, to create uh, four tables from the assignment. Or tables or two layers? No, no, on that side. Yeah, I'm talking about the project too. So for task three, you are asked to create two folders and uh, you can actually uh, just have the third folder and use the output uh, to dump it into your Postgres. No, or before are that, we on task uh, one, uh, so, task one. Yeah. It is, uh, we should okay. create four, four tables. So yeah, for the CSKMS. Yeah, do we need yeah. to make notes for each one, right? Uh, so have you done, done this, actually? I have been working on it. Okay. So uh, after you have uh, received the data, you're going to create just these schemas. These are just uh, four head tables. For, so I'm just looking at them. So the time series, uh, so post performance uh, stats and yeah. the place to re review. So when you get the data, you're going to have, you, you're going to see the, the schema, right? So yeah. when uploading it to your Postgres, you just need to create a schema. This is not uh, connected to this one. Oh, okay. okay. So, any other quick questions? Okay. Maybe when we have uh, the demo, uh, it will be more clear. But any questions so, so far, guys? Okay, Abraham seems to get it. What about the others? Okay. Okay, guys, thank you. So let's move on to the demo. So uh, let me just share this screen. Okay, can you see it? Oh, good. So um, this is just uh, a demo that I have prepared. Um, so let's just go through it. So the first thing you're gonna do uh, is you have to pip install or just install uh, Kedro on your um, on your machine and then you're gonna just uh, start a new uh, Kedro project right so 
to start a new Kedro project, you, you just need to do Kedro. Oh, sorry. Since my name is Kedro, it's uh, confusing when I type it. Kedro, new. So when you type Kedro, oh, sorry, I haven't. Uh, source. Uh, Okay, so when you say Kedronio, uh, it's going to ask you for the project name. So you're gonna gi give it a project name. I don't know uh, your project name. So let's just uh, call it um, Go, um, sorry. Day three. So it's going to ask you uh, just to choose uh, which uh, tools you need to include, you want to include, since I don't have, uh, I am having a bit of problem with PySpark. I'm just going to uh, have the first five, so I'm going to choose one to five. Uh, and press enter. And it's going to ask me if I want to see or uh, check out uh, an example pipeline, I'm going to type no, and it's going to create it. So uh, as you can see here, it's created, it has created a D3 um, folder, and it's in, in the folder, you can see it's a folder. So the first one is configuration uh, folder, or uh, 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 so under that you have the uh, base and the local, so in the base, you have the catalog, which is a very important uh, file. So it's a YAML file, and you're going to use the YAML syntax in order to write in it. It doesn't have anything. And the the we're not going to uh, touch that for now. And for the local, you also have creations. Uh, if you are using uh, other uh, in since we are not going to do that, we are just going to avoid that one too. And uh, for the data, you have the seven layers. So you have the first layer, row, intermediate, uh, primary, feature, model outputs, uh, models, which is optional, where you where you put your models and model output and report. So we have seen this. Uh, uh, layers earlier, so they are currently empty. So after that, you have the docs. Uh, since we are not going to be working on that, we're not going to test that too. So the notebooks, so here is where you are going to be keeping your notebooks in. And the source files, so in the source files, you have uh, some uh, scripts. So this is the pipeline registry. So when you are, when you have done your pipeline, it it, it needs to be re registered, and it's going to do it automatically. If Kero doesn't do it automatically, we are going to do it manually. But that's rare. And the settings. So this is just uh, uh, automatically created. So other than that, you have the pipeline. Uh, and the tests, which are also empty, just a normal script files. And yeah, so these all are going to be created uh, automatically. So yeah. So after that, uh, the first thing, so I have already uh, prepared the data. So for the data, I've used the uh, diabetes uh, data that we used, uh, I think, in week two during the our tutorial se sessions. So you can see the data here. So I just uh, moved it uh, to the raw data. So this is the only uh, data that I'm going to be adding to this project. Yeah. So the next thing uh, that we are going to do is uh, go to our uh, config uh, directory and base. 
under this, we have the catalog. And under, under the catalog, uh, what we are going to do is just uh, name our uh, file. So we, we, so let's call it the raw data, right? So raw uh, data, that's, it's already there. So raw data, uh, and the type is, as you can see, it's a CSV file. So type pandas CSV data set. And for the file path, we have, uh, so the relative file path is just data slash the zero one dash row, and then the name of the CSV file. So after doing this, so uh, uh, so it's going to automatically know where it's stored and it, at, it can load, load the data automatically. So it's going to be way much easier. So uh, like uh, under the notebooks, I just created another not notebook and just uh, loaded, uh, let's do it together. So just loaded the KDRO. So it's going to take some time. So uh, you can see here, uh, let's just say, uh, so I don't think we need to reload it. So we have the catalog. So uh, the catalog, the pipeline, and uh, the sessions and the, the context. So these global variables are already uh, defined for us. So the context, the session, the catalog, and the uh, pipeline. So the catalog, if you remember, is used to uh, like, uh, so it's a data ca catalog, right? So when we need to load the data and do things with the data, we're going to use a this variable, this global variable. So it's already defined, you can see it here, so it's an object. So in order to load the data, what we are going to do is just call the catalog dot load, and then the name of uh, the data. So we have named it here, row data, as you remember, row data. So th this is the YAML syn syntax, you don't know. Uh, so um, yeah, here you can see the raw data here. So it's already lo loaded. So I don't need to like import it and do things with, with that one. It's just, it's going to be automatically loaded. So it's going to save a lot of resource and time. So I'm just going to, uh, uh, load this uh, raw data into a uh, in lo locally so i've just na named it raw data and when it's loaded you can see the head the or the top five here and then we're just going to start the cleaning process so i if you uh, we have actually done this earlier so on week, on week two we did um, the cleaning together so this is just the cleaning phase done together so after it's cleaned you can see the data set here so it's not fully cleaned it's just cleaned um, and uh, yeah so after doing this so what uh, this uh, like the notebook is going to help us is just make it easier to explore the data it's not a must, but it makes it a lot easier to explore. It. So as you can, can see, like I can, uh, since I have already done the clinic, it's not that hard, but if I was new for the data, I'm going to need to see uh, every change that uh, I'm going to do on the data reflected on the final result, right? So that's why I'm going to be need, needing uh, a constant update. So notebooks are a perfect way to do this. So after you have done this, uh, the next thing is uh, you're gonna do, the next thing you're gonna do is just uh, convert this uh, not notebook into a functions, like a script. So uh, in order to do that, after you have done, done that, what you're gonna do is just uh, start a new pipeline. You can just say, uh, uh, like Kedros Pro, uh, start pipeline. Uh, yeah. 
So since I already have uh, started the pipeline, Okay, I'm sorry. I'm not going to do it. Uh, that's, yeah. Okay. okay. So when you do that, uh, what you're gonna be looking at is just under the source folder directory, you're gonna have the pipeline, right? But the pipeline is already empty. If you want to see the new one, uh, you can see that the pipeline is empty, but when you start a new pipeline and name the pipeline, so I named my pipeline uh, data clinic. So you're gonna have these two uh, scripts, right? The node and the pipeline. So in the node, you're gonna take uh, the functions that you have created earlier from the notebooks and just paste them here. So if you can see, uh like uh this first function is just going to drop the columns so you're gonna give it a series of columns and it's just going to drop these columns from the uh, data frame and re return it and the next function is just going to uh, uh forward field so you're gonna give it a column and it's going to use a forward field method in order to fill the non values and then uh, here, you have the get dummies, uh, like, uh, so here, okay, sorry, um, so here it's just, so you have category called uh, columns, right, if you remember, so for the category called columns, you need to change them into nu numerical in order to have a proper uh, email right uh, a ready data so you change them so uh, pandas have a get dummies uh, function that's going to so uh, this is what it's going to do have uh, yeah so that's it so we only have these three functions so the first one is a drop and the next one is just the for art field you can see it and the last one is the get dummies so after that uh, you're just going to have a pipeline like a function that's going to be using all this uh, and create the data cleaning process so the data cleaning function is going to uh, first is going to have the so we're going to give it the data frame and it's going to uh, drop these uh, elements and next is going to apply the forward field method in order to fill the non values in these elements and then it's going to uh, do uh, it's just going to convert all the categorical columns into numerical columns so yeah so these are the nodes so we have uh, just one node actually uh so is it clear so, so far guys okay only two people or is it clear uh should i keep mo moving or okay okay so after I have defined the nodes, the next thing I'm going to do is just uh, create a pipeline. So uh, when I'm creating the pipeline, this is just automatically created. Uh, so I, what I'm going to add is just the node. So I have already uh, created the functions and I have already imported them from the nodes. So uh, the function that I'm going to be using is just a data cleaning function. So I'm just going to import that. The rest are just there when you automatically create the project. So for the node, I'm going to define uh, the three things and the fourth, the fourth thing is just uh, an optional thing. 
Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, define the function that I'm going to be using. So uh, the function is the data cleaning function and the input is going to be the raw data and the output is going to be pre-processed data and the name of the pipeline is going to be uh, pre-processed data. So the next thing I'm going to do, so I have created the nodes, I've created the uh, pipeline and I've created, uh, I've done everything. So, uh, sorry. So I've, if I run the project, oh, it's not on the, uh, correct. So if I run the project, uh, it's going to run the function and So I'm going to explain what's doing right now. Um, so let's just uh, delete this one. Just created it again. Okay, let's wait for a minute. Let's support that one. Um, so, okay. So, uh, before uh, running the pipeline, I need to uh, just define where it's going to go. So, where our output is going to go. So, uh, since uh, this is the final uh, clean data, I want it to be stored in the primary, right? So, I'm just going to define the name. So it's called pre-processed data and the type is CSV file uh, and the file path is just uh, in the data, O3 uh, primary and the name is going to be pre-data.csv, right? So I'm just going to define one. and after defining this one, I'm just going to save it and uh, run the Kedro pipeline. So when I run the Kedro pipeline, just uh, uh, keep your eyes here. It's going to create the clean data automatically here. So this is what you are going to connect. Uh, you are going to dump into your uh, Postgres as indicated in the uh, challenge document. Um, it's taking a bit of time, but uh, yeah. Okay, in the meantime, uh, do you have, do, do you guys have some questions? Anything unclear? Uh, I know it's a new thing. Yes, Sabra. Okay, uh, so uh, for, for this, uh, for this challenge, uh, we, we are only uh, expected to do Till, till the primary layer, right? We we are not expected to do all the the rest, yes. the rest layer. Yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So you can just uh, delete uh, the rest of the folders if you don't want to. Just that it it's okay if they are there. But yeah. So the basic thing that you're okay. gonna do is just uh, clean it. So and. Uh, have the cleaned data in the pre-processed and just load the data into your database. So you're, you're, you're just going to have uh, three la layers, right? The, the row, the intermediate, and the primary. I don't know what, why it's, okay, so it's done. So here, so if you can see, it has created a new CSV file, and it's a large one. Uh, I hope it doesn't crash the computer, but yeah. So it's going to show the cleaned data, the pre-processed one. 
So uh, the next thing that you're, you're going to do is just uh, for the sake of the data science pipeline, it's just uh, feature engineering, right? So you're, you're going to do scaling, uh, encoding, and other, other things here, and then you're going to prepare it for uh, model input, and then you're going to have the model output. So uh, from here, only like three layers are left. So, yeah. So, uh, is it clear, guys? Yeah. You, you can see it, right? So, like, it's already pre processed, and yeah. I'm just going to close it for now. Yeah, uh, so any further questions? Like, I think it's crushed. I'm sorry for that, but yeah, any further questions, guys? So is it clear? Yes, Daniel. Uh, it's clear for, uh, for this one. Okay. Uh, uh, but then uh, this is all the production and ask it for to merge two tables or two data sets. Uh, how can we handle this uh, data processing parallelly for two or two? Uh, Daniel, I think it's better if you type it. I think I'm uh, I'm having a bit hard, hard time listening. Oh, if anyone uh, has heard this question, you can just. For our data. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. I think it's better now. Uh, earlier, the, there was a noise. Uh, okay. Sorry. Uh, when we are asked to do for two data sets in parallel, how can we handle it? Okay, so uh, you do have a couple of ways to do this. So, uh, are you talking about the role there? Yeah, yeah. So, I think you are talking about mer merging yeah. two tables, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a time so, task. Yeah, so if you want to merge the data, you can do it from the, you can just write the schema and do do it directly from the Postgres. I think uh, my Postgres is down for now. I just messed around with the source file, but uh, maybe I can change a laptop and show you a, a bit later. But I think it's easy, like just to merge two tables, you, you, you can just use the, the SQL. Uh, if create another table that's a merge of the two, but you can also do this by using pandas framework. I will try that if you have already uh, downloaded the data as CSV, you can use uh, uh, pandas just to merge the data. Okay. Okay, um, so if if you have the problem, you can just ask me if, uh, later, but uh, just try to iterate through it. So you do have a lot of ways to do it. Like you can just write a schema for, for it, or you can just use the uh, Pandas framework. But if the problem persists, uh, don't, wait, don't waste too much time, but I want you to go through it before. Is that clear? Okay. Okay. So, uh, another question. Any other questions? 
Is it clear? Is, is this session clear? Can I get some reactions? How is Kedro by Kedro? Uh, Kedro do? <laughs> okay. Okay, only three people I think understood what about the rest. Uh, let me just stop presenting. Okay.